Hi, good morning, and welcome to another episode of Ask Ellie Intuitive Insights and Your Questions Answered. Well, today is December 15th, and today is going to be the final podcast of 2021. So I've got a few things lined up for you here in housekeeping, and before we begin, I'm introducing myself. My name is Ellie Molina. I'm an intuitive, a psychic, an author, and the founder of Psy Kids Academy, a magical place where children and their parents learn to develop conscious parenting and develop the child's intuitive and psychic abilities. So it's a wonderful place if you're interested in learning how to develop your own intuitive and psychic abilities and you have any connection to children, come join me at the scikidsacademy.com and learn more about it. Um, Okay. All right. So good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Before I introduce our guest today, I'm going to do a little talk about the astrology that's coming up. And firstly, I have to thank everyone who has been getting on the calls live and listening even to the repeats. We, because of you, we've been able to make this podcast number 235 in the podcast list. And this is a big deal. Now the top 200 podcasts get listed on the individual sites, but when the podcast starts to hit in the ranks of 35 after 200 to 35, um, the industry starts to pay attention and I be, I got emails and I hadn't even been aware of the fact that the podcast had hit 235. And so, because who's looking at numbers? I'm over here looking at you. And so therefore I am so thankful and I am so grateful to all of you who have been listening for the last year plus to the podcast and making it what it is. If it weren't for you, there'd be no podcast. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody who's here today, and thank you. Good morning. Hi, Deb. Thank you, Um, and thanks again. Good morning to Josie and some of these strange numbers that I'm seeing over here. (laughs) Good morning to you also. All right, let's talk a little bit about astrology, and if my guest, Kate Vandenboss, can call in while I'm talking about astrology, that would be really great, so we will have that handled. So, Kate, good morning. If you are listening to the podcast right now, now, there is a call in button. And um, what you need to do is that you have to call in. Um, just hit the hit the little icon on the very top um, of your app. There's a little icon up there. There's a phone and you get to call in in. Let's see what's going on over here. Okay. All right. I've just sent you an invite allowing you to call in. So with that being said, uh, there you are. You are connecting. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about astrology while you're connecting over here. And good morning. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so, okay. We got some things happening astrologically this week. And one of those big things is we've got a full moon coming up on this coming Saturday. Now, the good thing about this full moon in Gemini is that it is very close to Jupiter supporting the sun. And it's going to make this full moon, you know, full moons are sometimes a little challenging. It's going to make this one really beautiful. This is going to be, um, it's going to open us up to joy. And there's another thing here. Mercury is trying Uranus. So there could be something unexpected happening for us this uh, weekend. Uh, that could be thrilling. It's like, wow, we've been waiting for a project to come to fruition. And here we are. So um, really pay attention to this full moon and just know that it's not going to be a wacky one. It's going to be a joyous one. And it will, may bring some very unexpected, uh, wonderful occurrences for you. So be in that space. Then on the 19th of December, 
this is where the sun is sextile Jupiter. So people are going to be feeling happy around here. Very chatter, chatter, yeah, charitable. Uh, the thing is, though, that Venus goes direct in Capricorn until January 29th, 2022. Now, what does that mean? Hey, you can head on over to any one of go online and check Venus retrograde. And you're going to see how all the major magazines have picked up on this now and have written about it. It gives them something to write about. I'm just saying, beware of everything that you read. Just remember, there are certain things. If you are dogmatic about astrology, and in my opinion, this is just my opinion, one needs not be dogmatic about anything. But if you're dogmatic about astrology, then just know that Traditionally, astrologers will tell you this is not a good time to get into a serious relationship with someone, and it's also not a good time to sign uh, financial contracts if you can avoid it. Now, remember, if you're going to be paying attention to astrology, then you really want to be working with a professional astrologer so that you know exactly where Venus retrogrades in your personal house and that you're not taking uh, the advice of the internet as to what, you know, to di- to guide and direct your life. So you really want to be in touch with somebody who knows what they are talking about. Okay. Uh, and that's about it. Then the sun, the sun enters Capricorn on the 21st, as we have the winter solstice. So this is going to be a really fun week uh, in terms of astrology. And then Of course, there's the Christmas vacation and the New Year's, and I will not be on the podcast during this time, but the podcast will continue in January, and I have some wonderful guests lined up. We'll be back on January 5th, same time, a little bit longer, so if you're going to be live, just bring a couple of extra minutes. Uh, Okay, so without further ado and more talking about all of this... I'd like to welcome my guest this morning, and she is she is the founder of Leading with Intuition, Kate Vandenboss. Hi, Kate. I'm going to continue introducing you, but if you want to say hi and let them hear your voice, that would be morning. wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. You got here so seamlessly. So, Kate is an intuitive guide and a nature-based coach. She specializes in guiding you to live a life that is led by magic of your intuition, one that is off the normal beaten path and can often go against the pressure of the shoulds, but is invariably full of adventure, exhilaration, and provides a completely fresh look at the landscape of your life. She explores with her clients the way in which the natural world of spirit is always talking to you and it's very chatty. So to be able to hear it, you need to listen and it's easier than you may think. So you can find uh, more about her work at katevandenboss.com. And I'm going to put that into the chat for anybody who's here, but Kate, not, but Kate, I would love you to share a little bit about yourself, how you got started if you want to. And then we'll talk a little bit about, um, why I chose to work with you. And for anybody who knows me personally, they know that I do not go to psychics and I do not go to people who I do not feel, I do not consult with many people at all. And they've got to be really, they've really got to know their stuff. And everybody just know that um, Kate is my intuitive coach here. So she's working with me, um, I, I, I'm going to let you talk about it, all right? But you talk about your work, and then you can talk about what we're doing. You can describe it better. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for that lovely introduction. And yeah, it's absolutely it's an honor and to be allowed into the world of your journey. And um, you know, I don't take that lightly. And there's, um, how did I get into what I'm doing right now? It's a wandering, meandering path, and I feel like as all of us, it's going to keep meandering and wandering probably until my last day Um, but what's changed for me the most is actually being okay with that is getting comfortable with a meandering wandering you know enjoying the journey view of life rather than an early on view of of life which was very much goal orientated um, and intellectual and um, always focusing on the next with a very set career path out in front of me and um, 
there's in terms of, I mean, I could go on for hours and hours about my journey. I just, I, I'll cut it down short in terms of like specifically what we're talking about today and how I ended up in the seat of intuitive coaching, which I, I do predominantly most of the time now, as even with businesses, that's I'm working with individuals or I'm working with businesses and I'm, it's just a pure joy to be doing something that, that I just feel like I'm in flow with. And it's, it didn't happen overnight. And it's something that has built, I had to build my trust in myself to be able to, to follow the breadcrumbs and trust that what felt like something pulling me off path, quote unquote, was actually taking me where I was supposed to go. So that's mm-hmm. what I do a lot of work with, with clients is understanding that one, you are in charge of your own destiny and journey. There is uh, a support team all around you. I have specialized specifically in the natural world. So I, I like to look for animal symbolism, listen to the trees, what's the wind doing, um, you know, insects, birds. Um, but everybody has, that's just the way that the world talks to me. Numbers is another really big one that I, numbers were the, one of the first things that I noticed probably a good 10 years ago. And at the time, about probably a little bit longer, maybe 20 years ago was when I was knee deep in um, really logical intellectual work. My career was starting as a naturopathic osteopath. I was heavily, you know, studying medicine and the body and the anatomy. And before that, I'd been for a couple of years, personal training and then sports therapy. And so everything I was doing involved me having to remember and learn something. I was having to remember the innervation of this, the, what bone connects to what bone, what muscle connects to what muscle, what are the symptoms potentially of anything. And it felt like every time I was going in with a client, I was basically getting examined again. I was having a test because it was a memory test. I, all I could do to serve that patient or that client in front of me was what I could remember at the time. And that was, it's hard. It's a hard, it's a hard work when you're constantly going through your memory banks and it takes a lot of energy and you're serving you're only serving that client based on what you can remember at that time Mm -hmm. and that was what most of my early career was about was like literally remembering things how to and then I walked into the world of uh, and I was always frustrated that's the other thing as well it was it was never enough I couldn't ever fully serve the client the way that I wanted to, the patient the way that I wanted to. There was always something missing. So I always needed to do more, learn more, be more, which meant more certifications, more studying, more things to remember. And the pressure just like really piles up. And because of course, the more you learn, the more you forget, right? Um, <laughs> and there, that was in kind of a nutshell, the meandering path that I've walked is one of studying the body with personal training going into then studying injuries and why, why was the body dysfunctional? Why, was, um, why were people still coming into the clinic over and over again with the same dysfunction, which then led me to, because it was no longer a body issue, which led me then to studying the mind. And that, because that had to be the answer. If it wasn't the body, it had to be the mind. And the, the same journey went through uh, studying human behavior, neuro-linguistic programming, um, you know, results coaching, a, a, a endless qualifications in coaching but they were all still very goal orientated and it was still me showing up to a client session having to remember techniques or tools or what did the psychology book say about this and my big breakthrough moment was about four years ago now I think and it was a pure example of what I'm talking about and what I work through now consciously with clients I was doing it unconsciously before but now I consciously will do it with clients is um following what feels right. And there was a very discreet post on Facebook that just asked a simple question. Do you want to be an earth connected coach? And I said, Mm -hmm. yes, I do. And that that was it. The answer immediately came to my mind. Yes, I do. I didn't know anything about this company. I hadn't researched anything, but I signed up immediately because it just felt like the right thing to do. And that decision changed my life. All of the decisions up to that point had changed my life, including leaving, going against the grain, and deciding that osteopathy was not the path that I wanted to go down after six years of studying. Um, Hmm. Then, you know, moving away from psychology. And I had to own all of those decisions and also knowing that there's always consequences to all our decisions. So it's very much about getting into a place of empowerment where there is not a world of rainbows and roses. And although those are all really beautiful things and they do exist, but we live in a world where there are consequences to our actions. And 
that if we can own that and take responsibility for that, that is the ultimate empowerment for a way to lead a life that is really fulfilling. It isn't always pleasant. And that's the thing, that's the reality of life. But if you're in control of your life and if you're empowered to make decisions in your life based on what feels good and right for you, you are in a much stronger position to navigate the pitfalls of the, you know, the mountains or whatever comes up that's the, the desert that are uncomfortable. Um, but this point up in Eagle was I suddenly was put in a situation where for 10 days we were out in, we were camping on the land. And this was pretty, I, I had looked at shamanic work loosely before and I'd never really embodied it. This was the first time that we had, I was really introduced to the shamanic work and it, and it really instantly embodied with me. And the thing, the biggest takeaway that really changed my life from that experience was suddenly this realization that I don't have to do everything for my clients. My clients are actually there to do it for themselves. There is not a, they're not dependent on me remembering something from a textbook. My job is to actually just show up and let them see what I see. Notice the patterns because I also, I love seeing patterns. I observe patterns and I observe that to them, but they make their own meaning. They make their own decisions based on what that means. And the, the beautiful thing then is actually, if you sit still and we learn to just listen and the world around us is talking all the time, mm -hmm. incessantly talking. We're just so busy talking to ourselves up in our head that we stop to listen. And if we kind of gave ourselves a little bit of space and quiet to listen, then a lot of those questions in our head actually are being answered around us all the time. So that, in again, kind of abbreviated form was the, a real, the latest turning point, I would say, in my life where there, all the pressure came off of me and I have been showing up in a way that I am like so proud of because I'm getting the results that I couldn't get through all the textbook study, through all of the memory, through all of the stress and intellectual pushing water uphill uh, now we can sit down in, in, in a client session and I work with what comes up and the client works with what comes up comes up and we are trusting that whatever is coming up through using oracle card guidance or intuitive hits or patterns or you know asking questions and bringing in the coaching skills that I've learned there the results are just so much more outstanding and fulfilling and I don't feel under exhausted pressure all the time to perform um, because I'm empowering the clients to do uh, to lead the literally lead a life following their intuition beautiful it's absolutely beautiful and I really wish that people who are listening to us could see some of the work that you're doing because it's got a very big visual component to it also and can you tell us all right. Can you tell, can you explain what you're doing with me? That might, <laughs> that well, might be you, easier. <laughs> if I ask a question in return, first of all, is what are you getting? How is your life better? How is your life different? How is your life? Um, what value okay. are you getting out of the work? And then I can answer that question. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Okay. So, um, as everybody knows, I spend 90% of my day in the psychic realm reading for other people. And then there comes that time where I need to take care of myself. It's almost like my basket is super full and I have to, I have to empty my basket also. It's kind of like think of a therapist who goes to another therapist to empty the basket and just release some of the things that are coming because a lot of the work gets caught up in the emotional. A lot of the work gets caught up in our physical bodies as, you know, you know, we just, even though we work on not allowing it. So in the work that we do together, what I find happens is I get to I get to focus on myself, which is something that I often don't have the opportunity to do. I'll give you a great example. We did the 21-day manifestation journey, and 
at the end of the 21 day manifestation journey, I was so concerned with making sure that everybody else was working the manifestation. I was like, oh, what did I decide to do? What was my manifestation? What was I working on? So that is a really large component where I get lost in the work and I give up um, a lot of myself to the work that I do with the clients. And so circling back to your question, now we get, when I'm working with you, I get to refocus on what is it that I want also? Like, what is it that I want to be doing? What does this look like? How do I feel? How is this showing up in my life? Where, um, how is my own intuition guiding me through what's going on and what's coming? And then seeking the answers and then having them be revealed also is part of it. You know, like, okay, this is showing up. How does this affect what's going on in my life? Let's go, let's look and take a look at where is this happening and what do I need to either do about it or who do I need to be in this process as I'm moving through my own astrological houses, let's say, put it like that, using, moving through my own as, astrology world. But it's not astrology per se, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, that's great. Thank you for that, Ellie. And um, <sighs> there are a couple of things that kind of came up while you were talking about that. So one of the first points I would just love to always make for any audience is that coaches need coaches, right? When you believe in a coaching world, and you can use coach in, in change the noun out, therapist, consultant, um, you know, intuitive, psychic, like they're, when you're giving out all the time, it's important for you to also be refilled. And it's actually, a, we get into this almost like Western world habit of needing to do everything ourselves, especially when we're, our, our role in life is to give and support to others. And I can only speak for myself, but I know enough people who feel this way that it's then there's almost this feeling that that's my responsibility to also take care of myself because if I'm doing this for other people, then surely I should be able at a minimum to take care of myself. And as you know, Ellie just pointed out, it doesn't work that way. You know, like we need to, their energy is a flowing, you know, back and forth. It's cyclical and, and it works in circles and it, energy needs to flow. And there, we are also human. You, no matter what we do for other people and what role we're showing up for, we're still a human as well. And, uh, so that coaches need coaches is, is a, you know, a phrase around reminding us that there we need support too, and it's okay for us to go and seek out support. And the other thing that also that I find in that situation is you get very discerning about who you spend your time with because you, you get very quick, even the clients, you know, you'll find because there's such a massive energy exchange and in that scenario, that coaching situation that, um, you're very, you become very discerning about who you're willing to exchange that energy with. So it's okay if you don't click with a coach, but when you do find somebody that you click with, going into that, that space is a safe container and it allows you to then recharge and reboot and look in your own mirror. And, it, and again, from a, what I really love doing is, as in a coaching session is holding up that mirror with, and it's always with love, but it allows that client to actually take some time to be themselves, work on themselves, it, you know, acknowledge where areas that they want to grow and learn. Cause we're always growing. If you're not growing, you're not, you know, you're dying. Literally that's the cycle of life. So we always want to be actively growing because we're going to be doing it consciously or unconsciously. And it's a lot more comfortable if you do it consciously. <laughs> um, so there, the, the other thing about showing up into a session, like you were talking about Ellie is that actually, you have no other agenda. If you're, you can show up and be yourself without the need to give back to that person that you're in conversation with. Even in, when you have conversation with friends, there's always this underlying need to reciprocate. If they sit and listen to you for 20 minutes, there's this, this need to go and go, okay, so tell me about you. How are you? I know you've been listening to me for 20 <laughs> minutes. And that is, this is what is so beautiful in, in this scenario is that you actually can just breathe and be selfishly self-focused and focus on your self-care so that's what the point i wanted to make about that mm -hmm, the other mm -hmm. point that, to answer your question around um so the the soul path map is the tool that we use and 
there that I use um, with my clients that I use with you, Ellie, is what you're talking about. And mm-hmm. the I, I love creativity. It's one of my earliest passions. And I'm just so happy that now all of the things that I've learned in my life are just colliding into this beautiful project. Um, and that's it gives me so much joy for something to be visually appealing. Um, and the this has been like a four-year plus evolution of of what this the soul path map is and the different um the ways that we can work with it but where it where it has evolved to is it's a tool that we base our work and conversation around so the the idea was that you have a visual landscape of the season ahead the year ahead your own personal growth cycle which are all things that you know they're they're slightly different but they're all based on the same methodology and the same tool is that there is just like a set landscape and then we layer on top of that what is happening with oracle card guidance and then we talk about that and then each each of the different parts or phases of the math that we're working on with you we go deeper we then do a deep dive oracle conversation we look back and reflect on what just happened so that we're we're learning from the landscape we just walked through we're prepared for the landscape that we've got coming up and the nice way to think about it is even if the landscape isn't pleasant, like even if you know there's a thunderstorm coming that you have to walk out in and get in your car and you're going to get soaked, it's not pleasant. But if you know that thunderstorm is coming, you put on the proper boots, you put on the coat, you put on the, the umbrella. So you're prepared. You have all the resources that you need to actually move through this growth opportunity. And that's, again, turning turning obstacles into growth opportunities, com- coming out stronger. Um so there, so with the map itself, it, we then like, we'll layer in a lot of other things. And as Ellie mentioned, it is the personal journey one is based around your personal astrology. But the, one of the things that drew me to this model so, so long ago and has stuck the whole way through, I do not, I'm one of these people that I can look at an astrology chart over and over and over again. And it, it is hieroglyphics, literally it's hieroglyphics. Um, I have no comprehension of it. But now you start telling me a story, and this is what I hooked into. I love stories and metaphors and symbolism. And now it makes sense. So the personal journey is based around your astrological yearly transit, but there's a story around it. So you don't need to know what specific degrees anything is at, what is transiting, if you don't want to. Like, But you're still getting the the result of a story being told to you that you can walk through and we all love a good childhood story mm-hmm, mm-hmm. tell us how it's, it's it's beautiful and it's you know i'm, I'm just going to say for me it's very difficult to explain uh what we're doing because it's so visual and it's so personal and it's just so soulful. It just resonates. You know, the work that we're doing, obviously, the work that you're doing with me resonates so much with me that it's hard for me to dis- you describe to somebody, oh, yeah, this is what we're doing and this right. is how it is. However, it has been so beneficial. There have been so many times where it's just like, oh, I open up my little journal and I go back and I look, oh, what do I need to do? Oh, I need to do this, 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 this. And so it really is a path for me that guides me and I do feel so supported and enveloped in this warmth of love and protection. It is just really fuzzy and wonderful. So can you share with our listeners how they can find you, where they can reach you and what they can perhaps gain from reaching out and working with you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd I'd love to, um, connect with with any and all of you if you feel drawn to it and I think that's the Ellie exactly what you're saying when you're st- when you're entering into the world of work that is calling to your soul it's hard to sometimes put words around it but your soul knows so I think that's the a takeaway is if if you know you you look at my website you listen to my voice you listen to the concept and something in you is going yep that's next for me that is a breadcrumb that's a soul's calling that's at least to explore and pull at the thread a little bit. Uh, that is, that's how it works. And it's again learning to move away from just listening to language and words and start feeling, feeling into the world around you. That's very much what your intuition is. How does this feel? How, how does this sit with me when I think about this, when I think about doing that, when I visualize doing it, how does it make me feel? 
Um, and everyone is going to get out of it what they need. I think, and again, that's a very fluffy answer, but if you're, <laughs> if this is something that you need, then you will know about it and we can talk about it and we can talk through it. But I think one of the, the overarching needs in our society right now, in our culture, in our world is, especially for people who are awakened to there is more to this world than the 3D is almost like something to anchor to that isn't that has roots in it you know when you when the roots run deep you know, there's no need to fear the wind and it doesn't matter what's happening around you what this work does is helps you ground into who and what you are what your soul path is right now what you need to be focusing on and it helps you almost come back to center and ground into your reality, which leaves you less susceptible to the reality around you and agendas of others. Um, so you can always reach me at katevandenboss.com and um, I'm assuming we'll share that link as well. And there, the Soul Path Seasons is for winter is going to be launching uh, on the solstice. I'm going to put that up on December 21st. So if you want to reach out and get a little bit more information about that or just you know keep checking my website over the next couple of weeks and, and seasons will be available that's a really nice that's actually how we started ellie is um you had two rounds of seasons we went through mm -hmm. and seasons are the the three months of um which is so it's not based on your astrology chart it's based on the seasons that we have coming up with the gregorian calendar and it's a nice entry level way into seeing if this is something that works for you and you can go deeper or you can say thanks very much and move on to the next, you know, soul growth opportunity for you. But um, there's, there's always a conversation to be had if you want to reach out and say hello. I'd love to connect. Awesome. And I'm going to encourage all our listeners to reach out and connect and just explore and look at what it feels like to work with an intuitive, an intuitive nature-based coach. It's a whole different experience. It's really fun. And it's for me, it's so, um, I'm a little, believe it or not, even though I'm psychic and I work in this realm, I'm still, would you believe I'm still very analytical and very, got a lot of left brain activity going on also. And so for me, I get, I have the opportunity to just relax into this, into this deep sea of well-being and feeling good and taking care of myself and taking care of my soul and feeling nurtured and guided. And it's just such a beautiful place that I enjoy being in. So, yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> anything else? Kate, you want to add anything? No, I just, it was, um, it was great being here this morning and I just, I'm just smiling from ear to ear listening to you talk right now because that is exactly <laughs> that that is the whole point of my work and that just validates everything that we just talked about so i really Aww. appreciate hearing that thank you oh you're welcome so everybody everybody thank you kate for being here thank you all for listening um uh deb says thank you interesting show thank you thank you thank you so i encourage you all if you want to reach out to kate tell her you were on the podcast and that you've heard that you heard of her from here and that you know just let her know and the other thing I wanted to share one more time is big hearty thank you to everybody who's been listening, who's helped us get to 235 this year. And I wish you all a very, very happy holiday, a very healthy holiday and a happy new year. And I will see you all in 2022 back here on the Potbean app. So blessings, reach out and stay in touch. Lots of love to everybody. Thank you all. Thank you, Kate, for being here with us. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, um, Josie. Thank you um, to all of our guests who've entered the live call show. Paul, Eric, thank you for being here today, too. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Want to say thank you? <laughs> Bye. See. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of the year. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Bye, Bye everybody.